Good morning, sacred. Good morning, good morning. We're gonna wait about two more minutes for a few more people to join. We're gonna start right at 10 o'clock. We're in quarter four. Wrapping up the year. We're working on new material now, so hopefully you have a lot of fun with this stuff. Good morning, Miss Isad. Just waiting about a minute and a half longer. We're going to start right at 10 o'clock. Make sure you have your week four packets ready to go. It's 9.59. We're going to start right at 10. Week four packets. We are on day one. This is new material, so I'm excited. We're moving on to statistics. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Esad. I really like doing these lives. I feel it's a, it's a calm way to teach. So we're gonna start in about 30 seconds. I'm just waiting for a few more people to log on. We're missing some of our regulars. But we're gonna start right at 10 because statistics, statistics. We're gonna learn a lot about statistics. All right, so it's 10 o'clock, so let's get going. <clears throat> so for everybody's warm-up, good morning. So for everybody's warm-up, I asked you to read pages two and three in your packets, okay? So you were supposed to read this page that had this information on it, as well as this page. This is just background information you guys are going to need for this lesson, but don't worry, I'm still here to help you out. So... Like I said before, we are in term four now. We are on week four, day one. Now, all of this is new material, okay? So I need you guys to try your best to pay attention. Um, please come back and revisit the lives if you, if you need help. Please don't hesitate to DM me a question, okay? So our objective for week four, day one, is that by the end of today's lesson, you will be able to describe the shape of a dot plot histogram or box plot and explain the meaning of the shape in context of the data. So what we're going to be doing in week four is we are going to be looking at graphs, but specifically we're going to be looking at graphs as a way of kind of telling us a story about data, a way of telling us a story about the information seen in these graphs. Okay, so we're going to jump in and get started. This right here is a dot plot. And the way I know it's a dot plot is because I see a number line that has a bunch of different dots plotted at each number on our number line. So that's how I know it's a dot plot. This dot plot tells me the delay time in minutes for big air airline flights during December of 2012. So this graph tells me how many delayed flights they had for each of these minute values for wait time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use information on this graph to answer the questions that follow. So the first question said, how many flights are included in this data? I went ahead and answered you this one because it's kind of a little hard to count all the dots. So there are 60 data points. And the way I knew this, was because I simply counted all of the dots on my dot plot and there were 60 dots. So now my next question says, how many flights are 20 minutes late? So in order to answer that, I'm gonna come up to my dot plot, I'm gonna find 20, and I'm going to count the number of dots above it. 
So I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So since there are seven dots, that means seven flights arrived 20 minutes late. So now let's look at 120 minutes late. So I'm going to come over here to 120 and I'm going to count my dots. One, two. So that tells me that two flights arrived 20 minutes late, 120 minutes late. So to find out how many flights arrived 20 minutes late, I came up to 20, counted the dots above it, that gave me seven. To find out how many flights were 120 minutes late, I came over to 120, counted the dots above it, gave me two. So what do you think this graph is telling us about the flight delays for these 60 flights? So what that question means is when I look at this graph, what is the most valuable piece of information I can get about these 60 flights and how late they are? And what immediately, we are in week four, day one. This is page four of the week four packet. Okay. So if you don't have your packet with you, you can also write it on a plain sheet of paper. I will still accept that too. Okay. So what does this graph tell me about these flights? So when I look at this graph, something that automatically sticks out to me is this set of data here and this set of data here. And what that means is that when I look at my graph, most flights are either, this line right here represents about 15 minutes because it's between 10 and 20. So most flights are either 15 minutes delayed or my next highest line is 20 minutes. So they're either 15 minutes delayed or 20 minutes delayed. All right, I don't really have flights that arrive on time and I don't really have flights that are extremely late by like an hour. So the next question says, why might a traveler consider using big air for an upcoming trip be interested, good morning, be interested in this um, dot plot. This is a typo, this should say dot plot. What might they conclude after studying this? So what that question is asking is if you were buying a plane ticket and you were considering flying on big air airlines, why would you care about this information? And why you would be interested is because you want to know the chances of your flight being delayed and how long it would be delayed. Okay, so you're a consumer, you are buying a plane ticket. So you, you go onto the web page, you go to Expedia.com or Travelocity.com and you see that Big Air Airlines is having a sale. So before you decide to buy, you look up this information. And you as a consumer would be like, well, I noticed that out of 60 flights, only two of them arrive on time. A majority of their flights arrive between 50 and maybe 15 and maybe even 40 minutes late. And then, you know, some of them even arrive to up to two hours late. So as a consumer, this graph is telling you the chances of your flight being delayed 
And if your flight is delayed, most likely how long would it be delayed? Okay? So just to make sure we're ready to move on to the next page, give me a thumbs up if you're good with this page. If you have a question, go ahead, drop it in the chat. If you're good to move on, give me a thumbs up. If you have a question, drop it in the chat. Thumbs up if you're good. Question, drop it in the chat. Oh, Sacred gave me a thumbs up. Oh, you don't have the packet, but you're good. That's great. All right, so let's keep going. So now we're going to look at a different type of graph. All right, here we go. This is called a histogram. This type of graph is called a histogram. This histogram represents the age distribution of the population of Kenya in 2010. Okay, our x-axis down here represents the ages and years. As you can see, they're counting by five. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and so on. Our y-axis has the percent of the population at each age, and they count by two, two, four, six, eight, ten, and so forth. All right, so now it's asking us, what do you think this graph is telling us about the population of Kenya, okay? I can look at this graph and I see two things. The first thing I see is that right here is 35. 35 years, not 35%, 35 years. So the first thing this graph is telling me is that a majority of Kenya's population is under 35 years old. All right, and I know that because when I come up here and look at 35, look at the amount of percentages of younger than 35 compared to the percentages above 35. So this graph is telling me a majority of Kenya's population is under 35 years old. But what's another thing it's telling me? Another way I can look at the information in this histogram is that as age increases, the population at each age decreases, okay? And so what that means is between zero and five is about 17%. Between five to 10 is about 15%. So the older everybody gets, the smaller the percentage at each age gets, okay? So we go from high percentage at each age down to low percentage at each age. So who might want to study the data represented by this graph and why? Good morning, Asia. So who might want to study this percentage and why? So we could say Kenyan officials, so people that um, people that uh, run Kenya's government, people that make political decisions for Kenya. Doctors might want to study this information because 35 guys isn't really that old. I'm 35. So to see that after 35, like everybody just, the percentage of the population keeps decreasing, we might want to learn why, okay? 
anybody that's interested in why population is changing would want to know this information. Okay, so, and, yep, scientists, very good, Sacred, you are correct. Because scientists, they create things like vaccines, they study um, water supply, food supply. Yep, you're right, Sacred, very good job. So I'm gonna add in scientists because Sacred made a good point, okay? So, Kenyan officials, doctors, scientists, anybody studying why population changes would want to know this information. All right, so let's keep going. So, histograms. Remember, this is a his histogram. Histograms can either be right skewed, which means they have a high value on the left and then decrease as you move to the right. They can be left skewed, which means you have a small value to the left and you increase as you move to the right. Or they could be symmetric, which means it kind of looks like a hill. It starts low, goes up high, then goes back down low, okay? Right skewed, left skewed, symmetric. And then if we look below the pictures, it gives us an explanation of each. So right skewed means that the few data points to the right are skewing the mean in that direction. And left skewed means the few data points on the left are skewing the mean in that direction. Remember, mean means average, okay? And so what that's saying is like, let's say a lot of people, a majority of the class got a 90% on a test, but then you have a couple that got like a 5% on the test or a 10% on the test. Your overall class average would be skewed down because of these lower data points. Over here, if a lot of people, if few people scored high on the test, but a lot of people scored low, your data is going to be skewed this way because of those few that scored high, but a lot scored low. Okay. So what this question is asking us right here, question D or question C, is the population data for Kenya skewed right, left, or symmetric? So, let's see if I can get them in the screen at the same time. All right, let's try this. All right, so this is skewed right, this is skewed left, this is symmetric. And this was our data for Kenya. So, is Kenya's data is it skewed right, left, or symmetric? Drop it in the comments. Is it right, left, or symmetric? Drop it in the comments. Looking at Kenya, is its histogram right skewed, left skewed, or symmetric? Sacred says right. Anybody else out there got a, a opinion? Anybody? I'll give you 15 more seconds to think. All right, so sacred is correct. Our histogram for Kenya is right skewed and the way I know it's right skewed is because I have high data on the left that trends down as we move to the right so it's the same as our right skewed all right so question D says try to explain your answer to part C in context of the ages of most of Kenya's population, okay? So what this question is saying is, 
how can we use the different ages of the Kenya population to explain our histogram being right skewed? And all we would say is that as the age increases, the percent of the population decreases. Okay, so just to show you what that means on our histogram, as age increases, the percent of the population decreases. Okay, so we've done dot plots, we've done histograms, now we are going to move on to a box plot. Okay, now Box plots are an interesting thing. And the reason dot plots, I, I'm sorry, box plots are an interesting thing is because the data presented on them is presented in a much different way than a histogram or a dot plot, okay? So we're gonna use this box plot right here to help you understand. So this box plot says 22 juniors from River City High School participated in a walkathon to raise money for the school. The following box plot was constructed using the number of miles walked by each of the 22 juniors. Okay, so first thing I want to point out is see this line right here? This line tells me that the 22 juniors each walked between, my line starts at one, so they each walked between one mile, and my line ends at 11. Okay, so out of those 22 juniors, they walked between one mile or 11 miles, okay? Now, see this box? This box right here, this big rectangle. That big rectangle covers about 50% of my line. And since it covers 50% of this line, that tells me that 50% of the juniors walked between, my rectangle starts at four and ends at about, let's say eight and a half. So 50% of the juniors walked between four and 8.5 miles, okay? So now, see, let me switch colors so it's easier to see. See this last little rectangle right here? This rectangle covers about 25% of, no, let's say it covers 10%. It covers about 10% of my line. Okay? So since this little rectangle covers 10% of my line, it means 10% of the juniors walked between 8.5 and 9 miles. Okay?
All right. So just to quickly review, this line represents the data spread. It tells me that all of our juniors walked between 1 and 11 miles. All right. Then where I put these rectangles in tells me the percentage of the data that falls in this range. So since this big rectangle covered about half of the line, I know that 50% of my data points fell between 4 and 8.5. Then since this smaller rectangle covered about 10% of my line, I know that 10% of my data points fall between 8.5 and 9 miles. Okay, so I know that was kind of a lot. Give me a thumbs up if you're good, you got it, you understand. If you have a question, type it in the comments. Thumbs up, you're good, you understand. If you have a question, drop it in the comments. Secrets good. Anyone else out there? Thumbs up, you're good. If you got questions, drop them in the comments. I'll give you about 15 more seconds. Whoop, got another thumbs up. All right. So now that we learned how to read this graph, let's start answering the questions. So the first question tells us or asks us, what do you think the box plot tells us about the number of miles walked by 22 juniors? Okay, so we kind of answered this when we talked about this line. Okay, so our box plot is telling us that the 22 juniors walked between one and 11 miles. Okay. So the next question says, who might be interested in this information provided on this box plot and why? So in order to understand who would be interested in this information, you kind of need to go back to what this information was used for. This information was used to show how many walk, uh, how many miles were walked for a walkathon. So, who wants to know this information? The people running the walkathon. And the school. Because the people running the walkathon and the people working at the school would be like, oh, this is what the majority, this is what the majority of the students walked. We had some people walk as few as one mile. We had people walk as many as 11 miles. But this is where the majority of them fell. And based off this information, they should be able to predict how much money they raised. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna leave this up for about 15 seconds just because I wanna make sure everybody's got all this and then we're gonna move on to the next page. We're actually making really good pace today. I was worried that since it was new material, but no, we're doing good. I'm going to leave this up for about 10 more seconds. Make sure everybody's got it. Please guys, if at any point you have a question, drop it in the comments. Okay. While I'm waiting for everybody to catch up, I'm going to drop our attendance code word down in the comments. Today it's going to be cherry. Remember for our, to get attendance credit, you gotta DM me the code word. All right, 
So let's go to the next page. All right, so now this one's going a little different. Previously, they gave us the chart. We had to interpret it. Now, they want us to make the chart first, okay? So step one says, oh, so let's read the situation first. It says, I'm reading right up here. Robert, a ninth grader at New York City High School, usually goes to bed around 10 p.m. and gets up around 6 a.m. to get ready for school. That means he gets about eight hours of sleep on a school night. He decided to investigate the statistical question, how many hours per night do ninth graders usually sleep when they have school the next day? So Robert took a survey of 28 sixth graders. I don't know why it says sixth graders. This is supposed to be ninth graders. A survey of 28 ninth graders and collected the following data to answer the question. So we're going to complete Robert's dot plot by placing a dot above the corresponding number on the number line for each value in the data set. If there's already a dot above a number, then add another dot above the dot already there. So let's make a dot plot. All right, let's try and find a marker because that'll be easier to make dots with. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to use... Okay, so Grace, I always post the notes after class is over on my Instagram feed. So you can go back and get any notes that you missed in case you need them, okay? So check later this afternoon, you'll see them up and you can get what you missed, okay? So let's start. I have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So what we're going to do is we're just going to read through this data and every time we see a value, we're going to put a dot above that number. So we're starting with 7. Boop, there's a dot. 8. Boop, there's a dot. 5. Boop, there's a dot. So I'm also going to cross these out just so I know what um, numbers I've already plotted. Okay? So now we're going to do 9, 9, and 9. So that's three nines. So that means I'm going to come over here to my nine and I'm going to go boop, 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 three dots. So now I have two sevens. So I'm going to go boop, boop. I know y'all love my boops. So now we're going to do 10. I have two tens. So I'm going to go one, two, 11, nine, eight. I have three eights. So one, two, three, one, two, three. I have a 12. Woo. Whoever of you out there are sleeping 12 hours every night, I am jealous. Now I have a 6. So I'm going to do doop. Cross out my 6. I have 11. So doop. 10. Boop. I have two 8s. 1, 2. I have three 9s. 1, 2, 3. Whoops. I have an 8. Boop. 10. Boop. Two 9s. Boop. and another eight. Okay, so I took all the data that was up here and I plotted it on my dot plot. So here is what our completed dot plot looks like. So now let's analyze the data and answer a few questions. All right, so Question two says, what are the least and most hours of sleep reported in the survey of ninth graders? So let's start with least. Okay. In order to find the least, I just got to look at my graph and find the numbers that have the least amount of dots above them. So when I look at my data, I see that there are three numbers, three hours of sleep that have only one dot above them. And that is five, six, and 12. So when I'm recording the hours of sleep that were slept the least, it would be five, six, and 12. 
Now, let's find the one that has the most. So I'm going to come back to my chart, and I'm going to find the number of hours of sleep that has the most dots above them. So I can see that it's either going to be 8 or 9, but to find out which one it is, I have to count the dots. Okay? So looking at 8 or 9, which one has the most dots above it? So 8 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 has 8 dots. 9 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Has 9 dots. Oh, very good, Grace. So 9, very good, Sacred. 9 is the hours of sleep that had the most people. So our most would be 9. Guys, Miss Tyson made a mistake. This answer actually goes here. All right, and I'm going to explain why in a second, okay? Hold on, Grace, let me explain because I actually, I, I kind of went ahead a little bit. When this question says, what are the least and most hours of sleep reported in the survey? It's asking, what's our lowest number and what's our highest number? on our line, okay? So that would actually be five is the least because there was one student who only slept five hours, but then the most sleep that was reported was 12 hours, okay? So, okay? So what this question was asking us was when we look at our number line, what was the lowest number on our number line and what was the highest number on our number line? So our lowest number was five and our highest number was 12. Sorry guys, Ms. Tyson made a mistake. So now question three says, what number of hours slept occurred most often in the data set? And like we just finished discussing, the most was nine. Okay, so the most hours slept was nine. All right, so I know Grace gets it. What about everybody else? Does everybody else understand what just happened? For question two, we were asking for the lowest and highest number on our number line, but for question three, it was asking us which data point had the most dots above it. All right. If you guys need any clarification, good, sacred. I'm glad you get it. Okay. Good, Kayla. All right. Now, question number four says, is the data symmetric, left skewed, or right skewed? Now, to help you out with that, remember this. Right skewed, left skewed, symmetric. So, when we look at this chart right here, would you say it's left skewed, right skewed, or symmetric? Drop it in the comments. Is it left skewed, right skewed, or symmetric? Sacred says symmetric. Anybody else? Left skewed, right skewed, or symmetric? All right, so for sake of time, we're gonna move forward. I'm gonna tell you sacred is correct. Good job, sacred. It is symmetric. And the reason it is symmetric is because it goes up, then it goes down. It kind of looks like a hill, okay? So since it kind of has this pattern, we know it's symmetric. All right? So question number five says, think about how many hours of sleep you usually get on a school night, okay? How does your number compare with the number of hours of sleep from the survey of ninth graders, okay? So what I want you to do in the comments, tell me how many hours you sleep a night. I'll tell you how many hours I sleep a night, all right? 
How about y'all? How many hours do you sleep a night? Seven. Okay. Sacred sleeps eight. All right. So I had a cup. I had three people that sleep eight hours. And two people that sleep seven hours. Okay. So how do we fit in with oh what did i do okay so how do we fit in with everybody else so those of us that sleep eight hours we kind of fit in with the majority of the students okay so how do we compare we compare with the majority of the students. Okay, and the reason we compare with the majority of the students is because our data, what we just collected, fits in around this high point of our graph. All right, so let's look at Question number seven. All right. Question number seven says, here are the data for the number of hours the ninth graders usually sleep when they do not have school the next day. So our first graph was looking at how much we sleep when we do have school the next day. Now we're going to start looking at um, how much we sleep when we do not have school the next day. Okay. So, First thing we got to do, we got to make our dot plot, okay? So if you look, our dot plot's the same, our number line's the same. It goes from 5 to 12. Now let's start plotting our points. Let me get my marker ready because it's easier. I have a 7, an 8, a 10, an 11, a 5, whew, a 6, a 12, I have two 13s, so we're going to put 13 right here. I'm going to extend my number line. We're going to put 13 right there. I have a 7, a 9, a 8, a 10, a 12, an 11, a 12, an 8, a 9, a 10, an 11, a 10, a 12, an 11, an 11, an 11, a 12, an 11, an 11, and a 10. Okay. So I did the same thing. I made a dot plot. Here's my dot plot. I just took each of my numbers, put a dot for each number. This time you can see we went from 5 to 13. So the least amount of hours slept was 5. The most amount of hours slept was 13. Okay? So let's answer these last couple questions. So when there is no school day, when there is no school the next day, is data symmetric left skewed or right skewed. So I'm looking at my data. See my data? I start low, then I go high. Is that left skewed, right skewed? I'm sorry, is that right skewed, left skewed, or symmetric? Is this right skewed, left skewed, or symmetric? Drop it in the comments. I see a left, sacred says left. Anybody else out there wanna chime in? Sacred, you're killing it today. Kayla says left skewed, good job Kayla. You ladies are correct. So when there is no school the next day, our data is left skewed. All right, 
So the next question says, what are the least and the most numbers of hours slept with no school the next day? Our least, as we saw on our number line, was, oops, sorry guys, let me actually put the number line in view, was five. And then the most was 13. Okay. So then question number nine says, do students tend to sleep longer when they do not have school the next day than when they do have school the next day? Explain your answer. So what this question is asking us to do is to compare these two graphs. So this is the graph for when they do have school the next day. And this is the graph for when they do not have school the next day. So this question is asking us, when do they sleep longer? And so Sacred said, yes, she is correct. So yes, students do sleep longer. when they do not have school the next day. Oops. Day. And how do I know this? Because most of our data points in graph two are above 10 to 13 hours. All right, so guys, it is 1045. We have reached the end of our time for today. So here's what's gonna happen. This exit ticket, you're gonna do on your own. When you complete it, Take a picture, send it to me in a DM. Please do not forget. Very good, Grace. Very, very good, Grace. That's a good answer because Grace pointed out that when we look at this graph, most of our students fall above nine hours. But when we look at this graph, most of our kids fall above 11 to 13 hours. Okay? So very good, Grace. Very, very good. So... Exit ticket, you're going to complete on your own. Take a picture, DM it to me. Please also don't forget to DM me our attendance code word for today, which is CHERRY. All right? Later today, after I have time to rewrite these notes, I will post them up on our Instagram feed so that you can get anything you missed. Okay? Please keep your eye out for our warm-up for Wednesday's live. So if you guys don't need anything else, that's all I have for today. I'll hang around for a few minutes if anybody needs to ask questions. But other than that, guys, please enjoy your Monday. I'm so happy to have seen all of you all today for another amazing algebra lesson. So if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. If not, I'll see you all Wednesday. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. DM me, email me if you have any questions. Keep your eyes out on our Instagram feed for any updates, all right? Bye, Grace. I'll see you guys on Wednesday.